Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 56. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Panthers and the Chiefs, and it's coming up next. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy. As it'll be the AFC champion, Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the champions from the NFC, the Carolina Panthers. Brandon Gunn with my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, for these Kansas City Chiefs, they, of course, were Super Bowl champions two years ago. They won over the Niners in Miami. Now, they fell to the Bucs in Tampa last year, but now they are back making their third consecutive trip to the big game. They have truly cemented themselves as perennial front runners, and now when we think of Kansas City, we expect them to be in this game. They're trying to emulate the New England Patriots who went to Super Bowls 51, 52, and 53 in recent years, and they came up with a win, loss, and then a win again in those three consecutive seasons. Meanwhile, for the Carolina Panthers, they make their third visit to the Super Bowl in team history. Let's go back to Super Bowl 38 in Houston, 2004, hung tight with the Patriots, lost by a field goal out of Vinatieri, putting it through the pipes, they lose 32-29. Second visit wasn't quite as close. That was Super Bowl 50 in Santa Clara, and the Broncos just ran over them on defense in that one. That was a tough loss for them, 24 to 10. But this team, they have a different look to them. This team looks like that they are focused, composed, and ready to win. So it all comes down to this. We are ready, and Super Bowl 58 off and running from New Orleans. Here comes Hall, he's gonna bring it out. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here come the Chiefs for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And he's been sensational all season long, but he saved his best work for the playoffs, leading his guys to the AFC Championship a couple of weeks ago. And now he knows what lies ahead. He's going to need to play a near-perfect four quarters of football to get his guys to the finish line. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. And he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Off the play fake, Green. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, Green. Yeah, he'll find Hill. And that work is well upfield across the 45. That's a big gainer on that play. And from experience, I can tell you, that's for defensive guys who come to come into the home and say, guys, you got some pass rush, but you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Looking to throw. 
Green gets this one to Hill. Sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Off play action. Green. Throw left side complete. That's Gonzalez. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to, you know, change up their timing, they're just going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him. All right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. This first drive, they're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that is caught for the touchdown, Kansas City. With a first touchdown of the Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Chiefs are on the board first here in this Super Bowl. And on the grandest of stages, with the whole world watching the Super Bowl, they come out and get the first points. I don't know how you feel about Brandon, but for me, watching the beginning of the Super Bowl, I've often wondered how come it's not just a fumble fest? How come the ball's not all over the place? The nerves, the interim in between of the two weeks waiting for the game. But this team came out and handled it just like it was a regular season walk in the park. Terrific start. Extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 7-0. Taken in at the goal line. And they're going to bring him down just past the 15 and a flag down as well. well that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. A very costly holding penalty. It backs him up all the way inside their 10 to start this drive. Back to throw now on first down. Shoves him aside. And caught left side. Olsen. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Second and five. They're going to look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They'll set up a throw. 
Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Second down now. It's Davis. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. He'll drop to throw. Oh, well, now it's Stratt. He loses the football. But fortunately, a Panther was able to get on this. So Carolina keeps the ball. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. to throw. He finds Smith out of the backfield. A good pick up there. 18 yards as they get closer for third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Back to throw here. Getting this ball out wide for Davis. Room here to run. Touchdown. A great effort there. 49 yards. And the Panthers are an extra point away from tying this Super Bowl at seven. Well, this is where quarterbacks passing numbers sometimes get a little bit more inflated than they should because this is a short little pass, but it goes for big yardage. Yeah, and this just looked like a simple, ordinary play to start, but boy, did things change. Once he got free, it was off to the races, and once he hit high gear, there was absolutely no one who was going to stop him. Extra point attempt to come here. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Carolina scores to cap it off. The 
the Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting back deep in the middle of the territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they're going to look close. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense. It's not the ball away. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Operating from the gun. Green. Open man. It's the tight end, Kelsey. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets a crowd to its feet quite like a big play, and that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. Extra point attempt here still to come. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Chooses not to return, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. First down, they'll start out with Hubbard. And oh, his first carry loses the football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Well, he's not the starter coming in, getting his first carry off the bench. That's not the way to earn more carries. You have to stay in the game, even if you're not on the field. Right? Stay mentally sharp, stay ready. And above all, when you get into the game, Hold on to the football. Don't let the other team have it. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. Well, these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say let's be aggressive and go after them. Green. Following the fumble recovery, he'll throw. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And he'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll run. This is Holmes. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Through one corner, 14-7 our score. The Chiefs with the football as we start the second quarter as they are looking at a second and five situation. Yeah. 
from the gun. Green. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now a draw play. It's a Koyo. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Back to throw. Green. It's Hill, complete. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And here's Green from the gun on third down. Working in zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Now the Chiefs spring on their field goal unit. And this one is right through. Seven. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. Taken at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And the Panthers coming out now. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when okay. they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They begin with a run by Davis. Gets it up around the 22, but no further. Did flash the fancy footwork, but not much to show for. The linebacker, Anthony Hitchens, there on the stop. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. They'll look to throw. And it's caught on the right side at Smith. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. A really nice catch, but bottom line, that should have gone for more yardage. Give him a pass in the flat that allows him to get upfield. There's plenty of distance between him and all the defenders. Actually cost himself some yardage there. Yeah, they got the completion, but it could have been so much more. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And it's Chiefs football, first and ten. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget, though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you, he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed, he's thanking those big guys up front for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he made by dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily, no. That's what it was mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Green now on first and ten. And that was going to be off target and incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Looking to throw. Green. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Hassan Reddick. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop it. That's what they have to do more defensively. Not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been comping him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Back to throw. Green. He finds his man complete. That's Hall. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Looking to throw. Green. He'll let this go for the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. A great play there. 37 yards. And the Chiefs continue to look good here in the first half of this Super Bowl. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17.
unit as they run up and send this one away. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more or I need to play better. Maybe even say I put my defense in a bad spot. That's what true leadership shows you. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to change much personally. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Here's second and ten. They'll drop the throw. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. He did a fine job there not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On third down, he'll drop the throw. And it's caught by Olsen. Touchdown, Carolina. A big play there. 75 yards. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. It's up and good, so they claw back into it, 24-14 now. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. City's offense now set and ready to go. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Now Green throwing on first down. He finds his man complete. That's Hall. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes. You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop it before you get a good head of steam going. To throw is green. To throw on second down. He finds his man complete. That's Hall. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 
So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And is it 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. They'll look to throw again. Open man here. It's the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Hall. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out, reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Back to throw again. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Operating from the gun, Green. And that is caught for the touchdown, Kansas City. A great effort there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chiefs are feeling good as they extend their lead in the Super Bowl. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Well, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Extra point attempt to follow here. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drives seven plays in length. And it winds up with the Chiefs hitting Beto. Just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And this fielded right at the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21.
No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So it's halftime here on Sports Grandest Stage in the Super Bowl. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Carolina. And they've had all sorts of success thus far tonight throwing the football as they're on pace to throw for 300-plus yards if things continue the way they've been going. 